uh, this afternoon now. Good afternoon, Francis. Uh, we have a uh, very blessed uh, to be able to, to have to what the Lord has given us, His Spirit, His Word, uh, to be able to have a fellowship, knowing that uh, the Lord is in a mist, knowing that the Lord is talking to us and can bring a petition before Him, knowing that He's here to hear us, to answer our prayers, to comfort us in all these things, we need him. I have a starting point in Luke chapter 1. I'm going to look at uh, what the Lord accomplished and what he came to, to bring us out to, because before we come to the Lord, we had no direction in this life. And the Lord is... We see in the scriptures what is still leading us today. Let's say uh, Luke chapter 1, verse uh, 78 and 79, a couple of verses. This is John the Baptist um, prof prophetically is talking about uh, that he came to prepare the way of the Lord. And who is this? Who is the Lord and what the Lord is, is coming to do? Verse uh, 78, Luke chapter 1. He says, through the tender mercies of our God, for they the die spring from on high to visit us. The die spring from on high to visit us is Jesus, the Son of God, the light of the world, the creator of all things. He took uh, the form of a man. He totally emptied himself, brothers and sisters. He humbled himself even to the death of the cross to take us to show the open the way for us. The next verse, he says, to give light to them that are in darkness, sit in darkness, and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Where well, is sin, in death, no totally darkness, no direction, but he came him himself to open the way, to bring light into our lives, to, to be the perfect sacrifice as we're going to go through here, the scriptures, and to guide our feet in a dark world, to be a personal savior, to be the one that is going to lead us through this dark world. As prophetical before he went to the cross, is telling us these things, and it was written from the from the very beginning of, of the of the word of God about the Savior, the Redeemer was going to come. That's why we're reading in the to a preordained sacrifice, and also reading also is an eternal sacrifice. Look at chapter four. It's a bit of introduction, but as we're going to our theme, going through these verses. Look chapter four. Now, Jesus is God baptized. He received the Spirit. He went to, to the wilderness. He was tempted. He returned to the temple as the usual thing he was doing from, from very young. And now he was there to read every, every, every Sabbath day, reading verse 16. But in this, verse 18, now they gave him the book of Isaiah. Again to read, but now it's the fulfillment. He came, Savior of the world, the, the light of the world, the Redeemer. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captive. We are captive. When bondage, spiritual death, and re to recover the ring of the sight of the blind, and to sell liberty to them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. It's an incredible fulfillment. All these things is talking blindness, 
death changed, no direction, no hope. And that's how we were before we come to the Lord. We had no purpose. We have no direction. We wonder sometimes why are we here? Where are we going? It's life. It's no life. Why am everything around me so dark? It's no good. It's not truth. Nothing. But Jesus came. And he tells us uh, 2,000 years, the fulfillment of the all prophecies about him. He arrived. And he himself reading these words and he's telling us the purpose that he came to do for us. John chapter 12. Similar lines. Just going to enter into the topic today. The Gospel of John chapter 12, we read here, it says, verse uh, 23. And it says, uh, then Jesus answered them and said, The others come, for the Son of Man should be glorified. He's referred to his death, for eternity as a, as, as a victory. He's going to be glorified. Because in other places, he says, When I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Exodus in the same chapter, further down. Verse 24, very, well, very, well, I said to thee, unto you, except a corn of wheat fell into the ground, and it died by the long. But if he died, he brings forth much fruit. So Jesus, if he did die, he will die alone. None of us, no man, including the Old Testament people, which is die, they died in faith, believing if Jesus did come to conquer sin and death, and to conquer the grave, to open, to give resurrection, the first to rise from the dead, no one was able to stay, to be in the presence of God, would be alone. But God in his very plan from the very beginning is not to be alone, because he made a man into his own image, into his likeness. He prepared a sacrifice preordained before the death of the world. And see, and now it is referring to that he was going to die to bring forth, forth fruit. The fruit is referring to is you and I, brothers and sisters. And it goes to the next verse, he says to us, He that loved his life should lose it. And he that loved his, his life should lose it. And he that hated his life in this world should keep it unto life eternal. We can all live in both worlds. We cannot live the old world life and want the new life. We must lose that life. That's the reason Jesus died. That's the reason we're getting baptized. And that's the reason the Lord know that he fills us with the Spirit. Let's read it, read it again. He that loved his life should lose it. He that hated his life in this world should keep it unto life eternal. If any man save me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man save me, him will my father honor. So if we don't have the Spirit, we're not of his, but they're the walk in the Spirit, that's the sons of God. But he's leading us to something very powerful here for a starting point, for a topping as we're going through. Next verse. Now is my soul troubled. What should I say, Father, save me for this error, but for this cause or purpose came out of this error? An incredible. Jesus, the preordained sacrifice, is looking for, for the moment he's going to go. He came to preach the gospel. He anointed with the Spirit. He performed miracles and signs. He fulfilled all the prophecies about him. But the hour now is approaching. The highlight of his ministry. To go to the cross. For you and for me. This is the purpose. 
So my topic today, I'm here for a purpose. I repeat this again. I'm here for a purpose. Because the Lord had a purpose for us. To chosen us, to make us his very own. To make us his witness, to make us his testimony. To make us his children. To reflect him in this world of darkness. So he, this is our purpose. We need to understand our calling. I'm here for a purpose. This is the message that the Lord has to share with us today, brothers and sisters. In Hebrews chapter 9, one verse, he says, verse 12, you can put it on the screen if you want to follow, Lord the reader to read it. By his own blood, he obtained an eternal redemption for us, an eternal. Only God is eternal. Nothing else is eternal. Not this world, not the stars, not the moon, nothing is internal. Everything is going to perish. Everything is going to be destroyed. But Jesus died for us to give us life internal, eternal redemption, brothers and sisters. And we have a purpose now that is in this world. The hope that is in us must not keep it to ourselves. The hope that is in us is given to understand our calling now as the gospel is committed unto us. As we're going to go through the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 1. A little bit more along these lines. Book of Ephesians chapter 1. I know, brothers and sisters, we're going to go through a few things today by the grace of God. And by the grace of God, brothers and sisters, all of us, including myself speaking, the things that he has to share with us today to put in our hearts and to put in our minds, to stir us up, to recognize how precious we are, how special people God has made us to be, to recognize also the great responsibility that he has given us. We saw Jesus for this hour, for this moment, for this purpose I came to redeem, to redeem mankind. Verse 9. It says, Have you made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which is purpose in himself. His good pleasure and purpose in himself was for us to see us together with him in eternities of eternities. Written in Hebrews chapter 12, for the joy that he was set before him, he endured the cross. And the joy that we gave him the strength to endure the cross, brothers and sisters, is you and I. Incredible. The love that he has for us. Greater love have no man than this, that a man have bare light down his life for his friends. He has revealed to us the mystery of his will. We read to you verse 9. Verse 10. That in the dispensation, I read it again. That in the dispensation, I don't know how to say the word, station, uh, sorry about the dribble here, of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ Jesus, both which is, are in heaven and which is in earth, even in him. It talks about the in to the eternity, into the appointing of time. He's going to come and gather us all together. To be in him, to be with him in eternities. What other thing in this world will be a better a better purpose to live for than this? Verse 11. In whom also who have 
obtain an inheritance, be predestinated, proorised before the world, according to his, according to the purpose of him who worked all things after the counsel of his own will. That's what Jesus says, not my will, but the will be done, Father. And the will of the Father and of the Son is signed for us to redeem, to be with him forever in eternity. Revelations, chapter 1. The mind stops when you read scriptures like this. Sorry about that. My Bible is falling apart. I read verse uh, 4. John to the seven churches, which is in Asia. Christ be unto you in peace from him which is he, which is in God, which he is to come, and who I read it again because I missed one point here. Uh, John to the seven churches, which is in Asia, grace be to you, and peace from him which is, which which is is, which he was, and which to come, and from the seven spirit, which is uh, before he is strong. So he is, he was, and is to come. And this is what you're looking for, brothers and sisters. Verse 5. From Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of kings. Jesus is the prince. And the kings that is referring to is referring to, ah, to us. Of the earth. And to him who he loved us, and he was us, from our sins in his own blood. And he made us kings and priests unto our God and his, and, and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. What an honor. He made us his very own. He made us kings and priests. He given us his name. He highly exalted us above all things. To none of the world, in this world of, of, of the biblical stories you read, and to any man, he says, you are the light of the world. But to you and I, Romans said, more things are better. Because we highlight how precious we are, how special the Lord has made us to be. What a privileged position we stand. And if we understand, if we don't understand that, we're going to exchange this with the temporary things in this world. We're going to lose our purpose of our calling. Roman side. I read from verse 15. For you have, have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. He manages his very own, he manages his children to be able to call him Father. He has given us his name. And we make sure, brothers and sisters, we do not take the, the name of Jesus without a value. We have to honor him in everything we do. Look what it says the next verse. It says, uh, Abba Father, the Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. He has given us a testimony to be called and testified in our lives 
that we are the children of God, that we are no longer belong to this world. Verse 17, and if children are the heirs of God and join heirs with Christ, if so be that we are suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together, join heirs with Christ. What an inheritance is this? What a calling. What a privilege, what a glorious position we stand in the midst of a dark world. The children of the living God, his testimony, his witness. First Peter, chapter 2. I read it, verse, verse 1, 9, sorry. First Peter, chapter 2, verse 9. He says here, Peter looks put it this way. You are you are chosen. Uh, generation. I really I'll go back to the Bible myself. Sorry about that. Actually, this is, uh, I'll read the verse, uh, you've got it there in a minute. What I was reading before, I should have read it again. The title of this verse is, You are chosen that, uh, uh, that, that you should show, show forth the prizes of him. The price of him. But you are chosen generation, it says, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the prizes of him who will call you out of darkness unto his marvelous lives. The prizes of him is referring to his glory, his testimony, his, his attributes, his characteristics. This is a testimony. Because we are born from above. We are born of his spirit. And now we still live in this world. We need to understand that in this world, we must acknowledge him daily. In this world, we must acknowledge him that we need to be directed by his word. Not only to direct us, to be comforted, to be, to be taught by him, and so on. We need to cleave unto him, to him, to be in the vine. One way in him will be a fruit. Without me, you can do nothing. So we are chosen for a purpose to demonstrate these attributes. The price is referred to is a retest. It's an, it's, an, it's an attribute which only proceeds. It's the characteristics of the character of Christ. Second Peter, he actually, chapter one, talks about this, the same word. Second Peter, chapter one. I read from verse three. According as he divine power, the given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that has called us unto glory and virtue. Virtue is the attribute. We just read it. The prices of him, his characteristics. It is all it proceeds from God. You cannot demonstrate it. That's why we read in Proverbs 31, the virtuous woman. Where shall I, who shall find a virtuous woman? The virtuous woman is referred to is referring to the bride, to the church. Verse 4, where we are given unto us exceeding a great precious promises, that by this you may partake of the divine nature. 
having escaped the corruption of the sin in the world through lust. And besides this, give all diligence. Add to your five virtues, these characteristics. Let them be demonstrated in our lives. And to the virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance passions, and to passions godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity, which is love. For if these things be in you and abound, that should make you neither to be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then the next verse, if we like these things, we have life. But how can we demonstrate all these things, characteristics? We are sending human, not people that live in this flesh. Because the spirit dwells inside us. And when we, dwell, we, we draw across to him, we allow him to rule in our lives. We understand the calling. He says, it's God who will create, becomes a good work inside us. And he that becomes a good work inside us, he will finish this. But we need to acknowledge him. This is the purpose. This is the reason he died. You know what he, in the Gospel of John, we read the chapter 12. And after he said, for this hour, for this purpose, I come, Lord, glorify thy name. And he says, he says after I said, I have glorified thee, and I will glorify thee again. And some people heard a thunder, nothing. Other says, an angel spoke to him. The Lord is talking to us today. Let are not the words bounce over us. Let are open our ears and our hearts at the same time, brothers and sisters. That with him, we can do all things. With him, only with him, only in him, we can be that person that he chose us to be. If we don't allow him to work inside us, to change us, to, to refinish us, to prepare us, we're not going to have a testimony. How can we stand in the presence of the living God? So the Lord is calling us to recognize our calling and we are his testimony. Okay. I'm just going to go to Philippians chapter 2. No, it's Philippians, 2nd Philipp, uh, Timothy, sorry. Paul is talking about 2nd Timothy chapter 3 verse 10. I don't know what happens to me. I read here, it says, verse 10, it says, but thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, passions. When he says the word that you write to Timothy, fully know, in a Greek word, word is pericolutisa, which is it's all Greek to you. It means you watch me living this life, reflecting these characteristics. That's why he knew. So now, we not only have the testimonies of Paul, and all the great men of the Bible, who had the greatest, the greatest testimony of all is Jesus. We are looking unto Jesus. He is still the author and finish of our life. We ought to follow his footsteps. We ought to desire to be like him. And the only way to be like him is to learn of him, to hear his word, to alert him, his word to have effect on us. He prepares for the kingdom. And when that happens, automatically we reflect in this characteristics. And Paul is not bragging, but he's right to Timothy, you saw me, you know this, you fully know this because you have seen me. This is the life. My doctor, my teaching, man of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, passions. He was going through difficulties, but he was persistent, he was continued steadfast. He always acknowledged the Lord. He prayed always. He was encouraged in his letters. Pray without ceasing. Pray always in the spirit. That's the encouragement today we're receiving. 
It's not a, it's not a difficult. It's not a to talk to put us down, but it's a talk to encourage us about these things, to understand our calling. We are raw priesthood. We are his testimony. Sometimes I'm thinking about the lordship. The people they 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 came and no longer with us and they drifted. You know what happened to them? They lost their purpose. They saw they saw the things of this world. They considered a better life and a better treasures or better value, not understanding treasure. The Lord. Not even the heavens or the stars or the galaxies we see or the earth we live. The people, the animals, and all that, all the elements we see now, everything's going to perish. Everything's going to be dissolved. But you and I, brothers and sisters, we are called to be internal forever and ever with God, not just in darkness, with God. What a calling. What a hope. Paul understood or perceived I'm here for a purpose. Paul understood that. I read it again. Paul understood and perceived I'm here for a purpose. So the encouragement to die, brothers and sisters, to to perceive, to understand that are here for a purpose. Philippians chapter one. Philippians chapter one, we read the best nine. No, it's best to edit, sorry. I'm looking at the other uh, the other reference down, down below. Best to edit. According to my earnest expectation, best to edit. Two zero. Okay. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that is in that in nothing else should be ashamed. But that without, but with all boldness and always so now, also Christ that be magnified in my body, whether he be in my life or in my death. That's his desire for Christ to be glorified in his life. But if I have for a for to me to live is Christ. That's 21, and to die is crying, is kind. But if I, I live in this in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. That you I should choose, I will not. What should I, I should choose, I will not. For I may strain between two having a desire to depart from this body, from this life, to be with Christ which is far better for him. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And so he desire to stay behind, not for himself, for others. He had a purpose. He understood his calling. A calling, brothers and sisters, is to be a testimony. A calling is to be his witness. A calling is to prepare the way of the Lord. John the Baptist prepared the way of the Lord to cover some men. Now he prepared the way of the Lord to come with all his glory. How important is our testimony? How is important to recognize our, our purpose of our calling, to be a witness and testify to others the hope that the Lord has given us and the glory of salvation we have brought us up. Paul understood that.
Uh, Christ has abolished death in a broad life and immortality to life through the gospel. That's it. Now we're leading, coming into the gospel. This is our purpose. I read the heading and I'm going to read the scriptures in a minute. Christ abolished death and, uh, and it brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. Second Timothy chapter 1. Verse 9. It says here, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our own works. Okay. I'm written, yeah, that's correct. According to, um, I read it again, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our own works, but according to his own purpose. So that was his own pur purpose. And grace, which was given in us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the, the appearing of our, our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death. He brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. Where well, I am a, a poet and a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. For the which is cause also I suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know who I have believed. And I, I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which is committed unto him against that die. What he committed to his desire, his desire, not doing all this because he desires to be with the Lord in the presence of the Lord. He considered this life nothing. But still, he ran his right, still he wants to be around to, to encourage others. And encourage us even thousand years later through his letters, through his testimony. And like I said, Paul didn't say, follow me. He says, be followers of me. For I am a follower of Christ. In other words, if I don't follow Christ, don't follow me. So we don't follow any man. We follow the Lord. But we follow and make a note of the people that have a testimony in our prayers. And we desire, because we see how the Lord is working in others. And to be encouraged and to desire to want also to receive the same blessings. Because the Lord has called us to be equal. But we need to understand our purpose, our calling. Best, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 4. Seeing we have this ministry, we fight not. The heading of these verses. Second Corinthians chapter 4. We read from verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we find not. We have re renounced the, the, the hidden things of dishonesty, nor walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but with the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man, conscious in the sight of God. But if a gospel is hidden, it's hidden to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world have blind their minds of them which is believed not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is, in, is the image of God, should shine unto them. How the gospel can shine unto them now. Your testimony, my testimony. This is our purpose of our calling. That's the only hope they have. Somebody else's testimony. Shine unto us. The hope that was in him, he testified to us. The Lord used someone. I know it's the calling of the Lord. I know it's the right time. But nevertheless, somebody witnessed to us. And his testimony drew us. 
the testimony of the majority of us when we walk in the church. So this is different. I felt that I'm home. Verse 5. For we preach, our, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. So we are servants. The Lord was a servant. He set an example for us. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. When would he do that? In the very beginning. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness is referring to Christ. He shines in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this stress that in an earthly vessel that the excellency of power might be of God in order of us. It's nothing of ourselves, brothers and sisters. It's the testimony of Jesus. It's the words of life. It's his word. It's his will. It's his sacrifice. It's his spirit. It's his calling. Verse 15 in the same chapter. For all things are for you, for your sakes. That the abundance of Christ might be brought uh, uh, they brought uh, uh, the thanksgiving of many rebound unto the glory of God. So when we giving thanks, when we, we glorify God, we giving glory to God. For which is cause we find not, but there the outward man perish. If the inner, inward man is renewed day by day, something powerful is happening inside us. Because God works inside us. For a light affliction, which is but for a moment, working for us a far more exceeding and eternal white glory. Eternal white glory. Where we look not at the things that are seen, but the things we are seen are temporal. Well, that's what I said earlier. Uh, the things, but of the things we are not seen are eternal. Uh, read again. Uh, my mind travels to a lot of things. I'm reading and my mind travels other things. I read it again. I, settle, I have to settle down. I have to refrain myself. We are looking not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things that we see are temporal, but the things we are not seen are eternal. What a vision we have given unto us to be able to see the things that are eternal. Because we're not focusing there, we understand the things we see are going to perish. We're going to vanish away. The, the time is marching on on me. Uh, uh, Second Corinthians. He's given us a mission and commission. He, not only he given us the mission, but he committed unto us. Second Corinthians. Uh the, before I, re, I go there, I read something to, to use. Knowing, brethren, the, your election of God. For the word, the, 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 the calling is not didn't come in the word only by the power of a demonstration of the Spirit. Second Corinthians chapter 5. I read from verse 18. It says here, and all things are of God, who re uh, reconcile us unto, unto himself by Jesus Christ. He given us the, the ministry of reconciliation. So this is the mission, the reconciliation of mankind. But now he's telling us he committed it to us. To which is that God was in Christ Jesus, in Christ, Reconcile the world unto himself, not he put in their trespasses unto them, and he committed unto us the words of reconciliation. It's a commission. He trusted it unto us. We have no right to hold it back. If we if we begin to be excited and enjoy our salvation and we see how blessed we are. We should have the same desire for others to hear and come. 
not all the others which is outside, but the ones that are no longer with us, the ones that we can apply to encourage, to be a blessing. This is a commission. This is the purpose the Lord has given us. Just uh, very quickly, I'm going to wrap it up in a shortly. You know, Moses, here you will see the community of words of reconciliation in the hands. Moses, he held the rod. It was called the rod of God, the word of God. After he demonstrated whatever he demonstrated in Egypt, now the air passing the Red Sea, then the army is before the other side in, in the front of the children of Israel. And, uh, Moses didn't panic. He said, stand still and you see the salvation of the Lord. But the Lord had to remind him to him. He said, what is in thy hands? Use it. And the Lord is reminding us uh, uh, what is in our hands. It is the words of life. And when he used it, what did he do? How powerful it was. The Red Sea parted. It's, you know, it's impossible for us to, to, to imagine this. The authority of his word. The Red Sea parted. A dry ground for the children of Israel to go through. How powerful is his word. And the Lord is telling us, Speak the word only, but your testimony and my testimony it gives the, the, the power or the witness to know that the God of heavens is alive and is in us and is changing people's lives and giving us hope and a purpose and a commission at the time, brothers and sisters. All right, we go on to 2 Timothy chapter 4 to finish a few verses. Paul, he says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the fight. Course also means my purpose. Second Timothy. Chapter 4. Read from verse 1. I went the wrong chapter. Sorry, verse one. Charge, charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who should judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be it Eastern in Caesar, or Arab Caesar, reproof, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the times that should come where they should know it you are self doctrine. But after their own lust, should they keep to themselves teachers, uh, teachers having teachers, uh, uh, teachers having each in ears. And they should turn away their ears from the truth and should turn unto fables or fairy tales. But watch thou in all things. It you affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of the ministry. For I am now ready, Paul says, to be of, to offer. And the time for my departure is at hand. He is ready, but his last words is the most important words. The last words of Jesus to his disciples and to us, occupy till I come. Occupy what? The things that he has given us. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course for my purpose, for my responsibility the Lord has given me. I have kept the fight. Since for the, there is the light upon me, a crown of righteousness, which is the Lord, the righteous, just to give to me at the die. And not to me only, but to all them also that love his appearing. Now, this is a very powerful point here. When we love his appearing to return to desire to see him, we will motivate us. We understand now our calling. We know what is coming. And it's eternal, it's not temperate, and it's real. 
who have touched the goodness of the Lord, that they give us the good spirit. And all the people says, let us uh, understand our calling and the Lord has given us a purpose to live. And the purpose to live is to be a testimony and to live in eternities with him of these eternities. And all the people said, I live it there. God bless us all.